the gut rot of America. Time preference. Brandon Gentili here. Less than seven seconds. We've all heard the incredible stat line that a human attention span is less than a goldfish now. Less than seven seconds or something similar. Scientifically, this may not be true. Maybe it is. But the point still remains. And people realize today that it's harder for humans, harder than ever, to think long term. Modern humans have such a short time horizon in their life that it continually defeats everything they do. And again, we've gone through, please watch the other videos and the other blogs we have about inflation and how that has destroyed the last 50 years. Is an unbelievable site. WTF happened in 1971 when we delinked the dollar from true money. The dollar is now debt. As we've been saying, it's debt. The dollar is debt. Debt is the dollar. Dollar is debt. That has to be understood to understand where we're going in this constant growth cycle that we're in. We just need to spend, 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 spend. And now we're creating these false narratives and climate and ESG and all these other things because that's the only way to save the earth. You can't have an inflationary currency, fiat currency, unlimited printing, and save the climate and save the planet at the same time, if you believe in that. That those two things are literally impossible. You can't keep having constant growth and constant destruction of of resources and using every resource possible and dumping things in the lakes and the waters that's a very fiat mindset a very marxist mindset that we can just continually do whatever we want and have our cake and eat it too can't have both that's that's not how life works nature's laws we need a deflationary money we used to have gold we a true gold standard the reason bitcoin is better is because it can cross time and space easily instantaneously at the speed of light gold could not do that therefore it got centralized and then governments ended up controlling it all and then offering out claim checks, IOUs, or a debt on those. And then they printed more than they had. And we continually get in these cycles for hundreds and hundreds of years of these honey pots of gold. The governments control them because that's the easiest place to store them, and or most of the gold. And then they, they put out more pieces of paper, more claim checks on it, and then there's bank runs because people then have to go and say, oh my gosh, these people don't have enough gold. Where's my gold? And then they're making sure a bank run is simply people trying to go get what's rightfully theirs before the government gives it out to someone else instead because they give out, gave out too many claim checks. That's all bank runs are. And the Federal Reserve, the central banks, were created specifically Again, read The Creature from Jekyll Island, G. Everett Griffin, about the central banks. There's many books, but that's one of the most famous ones of why the central banks were created. Bailout is the name of the game. That's probably the tagline for that book, really. It is central banks are there to prop up the banks and make sure they don't fail. So you are not the, the owner of your money, your currency. As soon as you put it in the bank, it's not yours anymore. Legally, it's not yours. So your property, your time, your pursuit of happiness, that you your right to that is gone. You gave that up and it's no longer yours. That is insanity. That's, that's enslavement. Central banks are there to protect banks and the wealthy, and that's it. They're not there to protect you. So bailouts don't help you and I. They don't help the poor or middle class. They help the elites, the bankers, the people at the very top, the politicians giving out the free claim checks. That's it. So until we understand that, all these other arguments are moot. ESG, climate, uh, whatever it is, you name it, abortion, gun control, uh, the border, doesn't matter, literally doesn't matter. None of these things matter until you clean up the money and clean up the gut rot that's going inside of the government, the people that run things and the leaders, and really the people of, of, of America, of our people of a country. Again, modern humans have such a tor short time horizon because of that destroyed money, that wealth that's being transferred. We feel like we constantly have to go out on the risk curve. That's why you see people doing games stop, AMC, these meme stocks, going out on the risk curve, meaning they take these exorbitant, more exorbitant, more exorbitant risks because the returns are so low when they print currency, the interest rates go to zero. So now the saver is a loser because now you can't just save and then retire on that. You constantly have to take risk and more and more gambles. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to retire. The average person, like we, like all the things we've been talking about, $130,000 is the average 401k right now. 50 years of the 401k and $130,000 is the average. That lasts you for what? Maybe a couple of years, a year, two, three years, if you're really scrimping and saving. So now you have to take greater and greater risk on the risk curve because you cannot retire. And it's all because they printed so much currency that now things are three times, 10 times, 100 times as much as they were 100 years ago that you can't afford anything now. All coming back to money, sound money. So we have to clean that up and lower our time preference and lengthen that time horizon, or otherwise we will just print our way into oblivion and we will destroy ourselves, which is now happening. We see the crumbling everywhere. Illinois, California, taking laws away, defunding police, and people looting things because people are looting things on the elite level. They're looting you by 
stealing your wealth and currency. The the bankers are the, the, the it's the biggest heist in the world. The gross universal universal cash heist, as Bucky Fuller talked about in his book in in the eighties. The bankers are stealing everything, and they are professional bank robbers. Now we have people looting stores. The poor middle class are looting things because they don't know how to get ahead. They haven't been taught how to get ahead, how to handle money. So we have people at all ends of the spectrum now robbing and looting. And the average person is just like, what, what is going on right now? That's why we need a deflationary money. That's why we need something that keeps power in check. That's why the Fed, Federal Reserve needs to be gone, number one. But why Bitcoin can it be the thing that, you know what, you guys have your Federal Reserve, have fun over there, but we've got this, this other economy being built and it's going to take over all this. It's going to take out the CBDC, the central bank digital currency, because that's the psychosis that they think is the answer. We're going to control everyone, everything, control what you spend on, shut your money off. You can't travel to this state and that state. Your money doesn't work here and there. That's what China's already doing. That's coming here guaranteed if we don't wake up. This is why this is so important. We, I don't want us to wake up in five, 10 years. I don't want my children. I mean, selfishly, I do this. The reason I come do this every day and put out content is because selfishly, I don't want my children and my grandchildren to wake up one day and be like, hey, grandpa, the hell are you doing this whole time? Like, I literally live in a prison now. Uh, I'm enslaved. Thank you. That's great. How was freedom? How was that? that? Tell me about that. Let me read your journals because that's the only way I know what freedom is. That's, that's the path around. And I've seen this now. I, I was timid maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago. I still argued with a lot of people about it, but I just didn't know what I didn't know. I was that 13, 18, 23-year-old kid arguing about these things. But now I've seen this play out. 35 years old, I've seen this play out. I've been in business for 10 years. I played professional hockey. I played it in college. I don't talk about my story very much, but I got to elite levels of hockey and, and did a lot of elite things and been a lot of places in the world because of the long-term thinking, the long-term mindset, the long-term growth mindset, the constantly getting better every single day and never enough. There's always a next finish line and, and getting better. And, and not every single person has to be like that. And that's the beauty of this. If you're on a deflationary money, if you're on the Bitcoin standard, if you're living life and becoming your own central bank, having some gold and silver and having a good chunk in Bitcoin and saving in that, you will see your purchasing power increase over time while defunding the actual problem, that the problem's not the police, the actual defunding that needs to go on is in the Federal Reserve, it's in all the government entities. The more government we have, again, correlation, the more government we have, the less freedoms we have and the less prosperity we have, the lower standard of living. This is, again, I, it's, it's beyond frustrating because this is something I've studied for 20 years and it's it's very obvious if schools would just teach the right thing. If there's a reason that schools don't teach the right thing and they don't teach the things that you need to get ahead in life. They don't teach about money. They don't teach about history because they don't want competition. They don't want you coming after the government. This is all planned. This is, and again, this is, you know, I, I felt like I was a conspiracy theorist 10, 15 years ago, but now I know that it's beyond the truth because I've studied enough and I've seen it now playing out, the last, especially the last two and a half years. You've seen these things play out that you've been warning about for 10, 20 years. And now it's, gloves are off now. Now it's, I've been, I've vindicated and confirmed. And I, I don't mean to like, you know, sound you know, grandiose or like I, my ego or something like that, but this is this is that dire. I mean, this is, I, I don't know any other way to say it. I'm not the, the greatest speaker in the world. I'm not some person that's going to wow your socks off and be the greatest orator in the world. All I know is, is what I know. And I know there's a lot of blind spots I still have in life and I'll still continue to continue, continually learn every day. But I'll, I'll be, if I, if I don't say something and stand for freedom and liberty for all people and my kids, my grandkids, and that's the thing. Ironically, I, I don't want power. It's not like I'm sitting here saying I, I want to be president. I, you know, like I, I want just liberty, freedom, life, pursuit of, of happiness, property, and everyone to be able to keep theirs and not be taxed 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent on what they make and enslaved by that much. That you, the amount you're taxed is the amount you're enslaved by your government and working for the government, working for other people. That's indentured servitude, uh, whatever you want to call it. So until we start realizing that, the Boston Tea Party, 12, 16, 73, December 16th, 19, or 1773 was the Boston Tea Party. We are a tax-free country. And people revolted, a, a small minority revolted and said, get out of here with this stuff. The tax Act, Stamp Act, uh, Stamp Act, because this is not how things operate here. And the people, you and I are the ones that make value and create value in the world. And entrepreneurs are the ones that create value. And the employees are the ones that help the entrepreneurs create value in the world. That's it. That's how it goes. Government is there to just make sure there's some order in society. And they, they take that and then run with it and we let them now control our lives. So 
I appreciate listening to this ramp. This is this is so beyond the pale of what's going on and where we came from and what we are supposed to be doing and how we are founded. And in all men are created equal. We that was from the beginning. That hasn't changed, guys. And the media is there getting everyone to fight about red and blue and conservative and this and that, black and white. This is it's been all men are created equal since the beginning. I mean, I, hello again. We don't know what we don't know. Is no one studies this anymore. But like this was already there. There's nothing to fight about. Like it's it, this is this is what it is. All men are created equal. That means men, women, black, white. Man, child, doesn't doesn't matter. Like, we're all created equal. Life, protect life first, because if you don't protect, protect life, nothing else matters. Now you're on the slippery slope. If you're not protecting life from conception to death, then what does it matter? We just saw some uh, one of the states the other day said, you can abort a baby 28 days after it's born. Where I come from, that's called murder. But again, if we're going to change definitions of everything, we are going to live in a brave new world. We're going to live in a world that's upside down, doesn't make sense, and you're going to have a very hard time living through it. One of my favorite quotes of all time before we move on is from a woman. She just died recently. It was in the, in the Holocaust and was helping Jews in the Holocaust. And she was asked later on, why were you such a hero? And what made you such a hero to help people and feed them and protect them? And she said, I, not that I was a hero. I just didn't go over the cliff with, with the rest of society. I mean, that is literally what's going on right now. If you can just stand firm in truth and reality, in nature's law, in God's law, you will see society just continue flying past you off the cliff. And you will just, you will look like you're the crazy one, but please stand firm in truth and reality. Root yourself in truth and reality. Again, people nowadays, going back to this, they don't see results or progress in a matter of hours or days or even a year or two. And they call, it quits. And they call things a failure. Imagine, I imagine that's why humans live on average for 80 years. A full human life cycle to see things play out as they should if we are doing things properly, things take time. And again, in this sped up culture that we live in, in this, in this world we live in, where people are, are just, we got to growth, 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 growth at all costs, earnings calls, quarterly calls are coming up, quarterly disbursements. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. It's not realistic. And again, this is me, the success principles and things I've learned, the time preference from 20 years on, on the ice and 10 years in business and investing and doing very well for myself. I'm very fortunate because it was it's just study. It's not relying on other people. It's using network of other people and resources and vendors and partners and learning from them and, and knowing that I'm not the smartest person in the room. I need to get other people that are smarter than me around me. But you have to be the one to work and, and attack each day. And it's a decision to get up every single day and say, I'm going to get better today. I'm going to get a little bit better today. I'm going to get a little bit better. I'm going to take a little more action. And this is me playing for, for USA on the under-17 team, the under-18 team, winning championships, uh, playing at uh, the under-20 World Junior uh, tryouts. And I, I was very hurt at them. And I still had a great camp. Didn't make the team because I was extremely hurt. So I didn't expect them necessarily to make it. But playing at many different, the highest levels in the world and playing at Michigan State, playing in the pros, it, these are principles that I've, I've taken and, and I've put these into business. And it will... I hope to impart these on my children and my, my grandchildren because this is the, the most important thing. And in our lack of, of the compound effect and the time horizon and just seeing things in such a short YOLO-based world and just flipping over the Instagram app just to get a quick hit, dopamine hit, it's killing us. Six-minute abs. So many people want the quick riches and how to get six-minute abs. They want to put in zero work and pop a pill. They want proof of stake. Hey, I, I he owes the gold, makes the rules, and screw you know, all the other people. They want to put in zero work, pop that pill, and see results later that afternoon. Unfortunately, that's not the way that Earth and nature's laws work. We must put in the time. We must put in the action and the proof of work. It is said that God is not a needs-based God, that he is a rewards-based God, meaning that you don't just get things because you are in trouble and need help. God rewards those who use their talents and abilities and multiply what they've been given. He rewards those who put in the work and take action. Give and you shall receive. Give a punch and you'll get a punch. Give a hug and you'll get a hug. The law of reciprocity. Give yourself a shot. Money is always a big topic on most human beings' mind. Many shortchange themselves because their time horizon is so short that they continually flip in and out of investments, for example, getting taxed and missing the greatest opportunities, never letting the law of compounding work in their favor. If we eat cheeseburgers every single day, we compound negative activities, which inevitably lead to serious health consequences. If we work out every day, and watch what we eat, then we can mathematically surmise that we will probably, the probability is in our favor that we can, will live a clean, healthy, long life. Picking your head up out of the sand and walking the other direction, going away from the herd to the high ground. That is, I, I, there's some of the skills I have are, are, I don't know how I have them or why, the, the just walking away from the herd. It's doing 
generally opposite of what the herd is doing, whether it's investing, whether it was in sports, whether it was in school and watching kids do stupid things, or just generally walking the other way. I'm not a perfect person, but in general, I was, I've been very successful in my life because of the, the principles that I stood by trying to root myself in reality and saying, no, I know that's wrong, or I know that's not the right thing, or, hey, I know the herd is generally going the wrong direction, so I'm going to look over this way. I, I think I should pick my head up and look over here and see what's going on and what I might be missing. Again, build your fortress, your citadel. It's the only way out. Become independent and resilient. How do you become resilient and independent? Enough to be that shining city on a hill and be away from the storm. Well, low time preference or long-term thinking is the answer. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, the One Thing by Gary Keller is one of my favorites, probably a top three business books of all time about priorities and decision-making. The Compound Effect is also about pri priorities and decision-making, constant, consistent decision-making. And this is, again, two of my three top favorite books, business books of all time are, are these books. And then I'd say maybe our Jocko, Extreme Ownership, uh, The Dichotomy of Leadership. Those are probably like, I'll say those two books are my third. We'll say those three, three or four books are my top couple of all time. Compound Effect, The One Thing, and then Dichotomy of Leadership and Extreme Ownership. These are the rules of life. These are the rules of success. And again, why aren't we taught these in school? Why can we don't have classes just put on this? How can we know classes on money, on, on balancing checkbooks, on balancing ledgers, on QuickBooks, on taxes, how to uh, reduce taxes? This is insanity. I mean, it's absolute insanity. I mean, who can answer that question? Please, in the comments, please answer. Who, why is that? Why do we learn any of those things, those basic learning live life skills that we all need every single day that affect our life so much? Why is that? Why are we learning about microbiology? Why are we doing women's studies class and basket weaving in, in these in the things you're paying massive amounts of money for? But what am I going to use that? What am I going to use any of these things? Men's studies. Like, what, what does that even mean? Like, what are you talking about? It is, I digress. The only way I've found having a long-term approach to everything you do, knowing will take consistent long-term action to build something worthwhile is the only way I've found to being successful through life. This is a skill that's developed over time. Your parents can instill this in you as a child, but it's up to you to manifest this ability and nurture it over time to build a worthwhile life. Our culture has been ravaged by big companies colluding with governments, these public-private partnerships, again, fascism or Marxism, uh, coming in and partnering with the government. So the government's going to run and operate through these companies now because, oh, it's not government doing it. It's companies doing it, guys. It's private companies. That's how they get, that's how they fool uh, conservatarian, libertarian people. They could fool them into thinking, oh, oh, well, it's not the government doing it. It's a private company, so they can do whatever they want. And that's because they're in bed with each other. That's how. There's a guy in Germany 1930s, he did the same thing. Just saying. Again, culture has been ravaged, ravaged by these big companies colluding with governments, trying to destroy your wealth through inflation and shorten your time horizons. And that feeds into your quick hitter addictions and dopamine hits. They have admittedly, look at people thinking fast and slow. Daniel Kahneman literally consulted with many of these companies and told them how to use human uh, psychology and human biology to their advantage to suck you in, keep you attracted. They have turned human behavior and psychology on its head to create mindless robots. And again, that's exactly what Karl Marx dreamed of in 1848 when he wrote the Communist Manifesto. It was a bunch of mindless robots and the, the elites up here and then everyone else just mindless robots, just numbers, cogs in the system. The YOLO, you only live once, and high time preference thinking are slowly destroying the fabric of America where the me attitude has taken over. No longer do we take care of our neighbor, nor do we even know them. We must become superior individuals. As each individual hardens himself and becomes the best version of themselves, invariably, you then may have the makeup of a great society. When we try to operate from the top down, controlling everything centrally, it turns society into a pile of mush, soft, you know, snowflake, all the things we've kind of seen now because we have daddy taking care of us. What is good for the individual, though, is good for the whole. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, property. Society and community are, wait for it, made up of billions of individuals, <laughs> bottom up. Two roads diverge in a wood. Low time preference equals long-term strategic thinking with daily work and attention to detail. High time preference equals short-term thinking and doing what's best for me in the moment because I only live once. I'm not smart enough to realize I'm going to live more than one day or one week from now. You have the path of dependence and government and pseudo-intellectuals making every decision for your life or you can believe in yourself, break free from the shackles of tyranny, and unleash unlimited power and abundance. The choice is yours. Two roads diverge in a wood, and I chose the path, and I continue to choose the path every single day. Every day, it's a choice to 
go the road less traveled. And that has made all the difference. Stay strong. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. Please share. If you know someone else might get something out of this. If you don't, please let me know. Please let me know what we know we can do better. Dislike, comment. Let me know how we can get better and provide better product for you and better service for you. We thank you so much for tuning in. Time is the most important asset we have. It's the, the only finite asset other than Bitcoin that we have in this world. So our time, Bitcoin, it's the only two finite assets we have. So how do we get more of those things? Time is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is time. We need that deflationary money to lower that time preference and understand we have a long, long life to live. How are we going to live that? How are we going to provide value? How are we going to think long term? It's not through the inflationary, destructive currency we have now, not the crony capitalist, consumer driven creditism we have now. That's not it. We need a capital based system where you can save money, where you can save Bitcoin, where you can save gold and your purchasing power rise over time. We used to have that back in the day before they corrupted the system, right? Where you could save your dollars, your money, because it was linked to gold. It was actually money then because it was linked to gold. And you can save and make 15% and live off of that the interest the rest of your life. Now it's opposite. We, savers are losers. So we need to be in other hard assets, Bitcoin, gold, so that we can save and produce capital over the long term and live a life where we're not on the hamster wheel. Appreciate you. See you on the next one.